Hi, Wes from Carl Wesley Sewing Patterns here. Welcome to my tutorial on sewing a helmet liner. This could also be called a balaclava or a ski mask, depending on who you ask. I originally made this pattern to be worn underneath a welding helmet or a hard hat. If you don't already have this sewing pattern, it can be purchased as a PDF download from a link in the description below. This pattern is one size fits most adults, and it is designed for four-way stretch knit fabrics. All right, let's get started. This pattern is designed to be printed on your home printer. Please refer to the assembly diagram on your pattern. Uh, it looks like this. And also please remember to measure the one inch test squares located on every page that prints out and that will ensure that your pattern is the correct size. Just a few things I want to note before we get started. The long arrowed lines on each pattern piece indicate the greatest stretch of the fabric. This is usually not the same as the grain line of the fabric. Also, please note the small black triangles on the pattern pieces. These indicate notches, and should be snipped through all layers of the fabric. We will use these later to match seams during sewing. Finally, please note that two of these pattern pieces are cut on the fold of the fabric. The fabric I'm using is a four-way stretch ITY knit. You'll see that I have my pieces laid out so that the two large pieces are placed on the fold. We don't want to cut here. When cutting stretch fabrics, I'd pretty much always recommend using a rotary cutter and weights of some sort, and that's because cutting with scissors, the fabric would just shift around too much. After I've cut those first two pieces, I'm going to refold the fabric so we can cut a few more pieces. Alternatively, if you don't want to cut any pieces on the fold, you could print out the pattern twice and tape your pattern pieces on the center fold, and then you have a fully opened up pattern piece. After you're done cutting and you've opened up your pieces, here's what you'll have. You're going to have two of the head cover pieces and four of the shoulder drape pieces. You will also need to cut one face opening binding piece. I chose to cut mine from a contrasting piece of stretch fabric. This piece is not cut on the fold. Next, we're going to take our head cover piece and fold it in half, right sides together. And we are going to serge the arched part that is the top and back of the head, as I'm showing here. As you're sewing, there's no need to stretch as you sew. Just let the machine do its job and pull the fabric through the machine. As you're going around the curve, Take your time and make sure that the edges are matched so that you don't get any puckering in the seam. This is what you will have after sewing the seam. The next step is to take two of your shoulder drape pieces and place them right sides together to sew up the side seams. Next, we're going to attach the head cover to the shoulder drape. First, we're going to turn the head cover right side out. And then we're going to place the head cover inside the shoulder drape, right sides together, so that we can sew it in the round. Now 
Now I'm going around that seam and matching the notches with clips before I sew. The double notches indicate the center front and center back, and the single notches indicate where the head cover matches the side seams of the shoulder drape. I'm going to take this to the serger after I'm done clipping and sew this in the round, and I'll be right back. Now all we have to do is turn down the shoulder drape and we're about halfway done with sewing. At this point, repeat all the previous sewing steps one more time with the remaining pieces. We're going to have created one outer shell and one lining. We're almost finished. Now we need to turn one of the helmet liners inside out. and we're going to place one liner inside the other so that they are right sides together. Now that we've got our shell and our liner placed together as one, we're going to go to the serger and sew the hems together in the round, just like I'm showing you here. As you're sewing your hems together, take care not to stretch the fabric and to make sure that the edges are perfectly matched. Otherwise, you may end up with a wavy or distorted hem. Now, this next step might seem a little confusing, but bear with me. Now that the hems are sewn together, we're going to reach inside the face opening and pull the inner layer to the outside. Then, when it looks like this, push one layer back inside the other. Now we have a helmet liner that's fully lined with all the seams enclosed. All that's left is to finish the edges around the face opening. One optional step you can take at this point is to press the edge of the hem with steam to get it nice and crisp. If you roll the fabric between your fingers, you can get the seam right on the edge. Now, since I sew with a lot of synthetic fabrics, I have a protective iron shoe that stays on my steam iron all the time, and that's to help prevent scorching or damaging the fabric from heat. If I can find the product on Amazon, I'll drop a link in the description below so you can order one for yourself. The iron I use is a Rowenta Everlast Anti-Calc, and I'll admit it is not a cheap iron, but it is well worth every penny I spent on it. It has a burst of steam feature, which is better than any other steam iron I've used, and that comes in really handy for a lot of different sewing applications. All that's left now is to bind the edges of the face opening. Now we're going to sew the binding in a loop. Fold it in half, right sides together, and stitch the short edge with a one half inch seam allowance on your straight stitch sewing machine. Sometimes stretchy fabrics like to get hung up in your sewing machine, so I'm helping it along by pulling the threads from the back. Use steam and press the seam open. Now we need to mark quarter points on the binding loop and the face opening using chalk. To do this, lay the loop flat and lay the seam you just made on one side. Pinch the opposite edge and mark with chalk. Now lay the loop flat with the chalk mark and the seam matching and pinch the left and right sides again to mark with chalk. 
Now you have quarter points marked on your binding loop. Repeat the process again with the face opening on the helmet liner to get four more quarter points. Now, using pins or clips, secure the binding to the face opening of the helmet liner. These will be right sides together, and you will match the single seam in both openings. Also, you will match the quarter markings that we just made. I admit, this is a bit difficult to show on camera, but it should make more sense when we take it to the serger. We are going to be sewing one edge of the binding, as well as both layers of the helmet liner, for a total of three plies being sewn together at one time on the serger. If you have a free arm feature on your serger, now would be a good time to use it because the face opening is rather small. You can start serging the binding onto the face opening at any point around the opening. However, I would avoid starting where you matched the seams because there may be some extra bulk there. As you're working your way around the face opening, you do need to give the fabric a little bit of stretch as it's running through the machine. And this is because the binding is intentionally cut smaller than the face opening. The reason for this is to keep the face opening from gaping or sagging during wear. You don't need to go fast at this point. It's better to take your time and make sure you're catching all three layers as your fabric runs through the machine. Now, something important to note here is that we don't want to trim any of the fabric off, so it may be helpful to disengage the knife on your serger. As you come up to the seams in the opening, try to match them as best you can, but if they're a little off, it's not the end of the world. As you come all the way around, overlap your stitching by about an inch, chain off, and cut the thread. This is what the result will look like. We have the binding sewn onto the opening with one raw edge remaining. Now we just have one final step to finish binding our face opening. Turn your helmet liner inside out and take it to your zigzag sewing machine. Position the face opening on the free arm of your machine and then double roll the binding so that it covers the serging you just made and encloses the remaining raw edge of the binding. To get my stitching started, I like to secure the end with a back tack. After that, switch your machine to a wide zigzag stitch and stitch directly down the center of the binding to secure it. On my machine, I have the width set at 6.0 and the stitch length at 2.5. If you use matching thread for your zigzag stitch, the result is going to be very clean and professional looking. Another way to explain this process is that we're folding the binding in half and then folding it in half again so that it covers the serging. It might seem tricky at first, but once you get going, you'll catch on really quickly. Continue stitching all the way around until you get back to the start. I like to clip the starting thread tails off before I sew over them and create a tangled mess. Also, at the end of my zigzag stitching, I switch back to a straight stitch and do a back tack to secure the stitches. The result is a nice, clean, finished opening that looks the same inside and out. Congrats, your helmet liner is complete. This concludes the tutorial from Carl Wesley Sewing Patterns. If you need any help or have additional questions, please comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.